Well, yeah. I, I have people messaging me, telling me that Dennis Rodman, someone, they, they were like, Dennis Rodman got a hostage release. Did you hear about this? And I'm like, okay, that's well, like I don't know if that's what happened. <laughs> a.m. from Los Angeles to San Francisco and then I've got a couple hours to wait and then I go San Francisco to South Korea and that's a 12 hour flight in like the worst seat imaginable. Well it wouldn't be an adventure if it didn't have its difficulties. I never check any bags. One backpack, everything in it, no checked bags. That and I've, I, I used to work baggage so I've seen too many bags get destroyed. Okay, I'm through immigration and now I'm gonna go get a cab and go to my hostel because Luke insisted on getting a hostel because he wants to meet people. That's what I'm gonna go do now. 300,000 <laughs> Korean won. Jeez. It's like 300 bucks. My wallet barely closes. Let's do this. So anyway, there's the compromise. The room's cheap, but I need security for my stuff and I need to be able to work in private because I edit so much and for so long. I don't want to be in a room with a ton of people. So hopefully this private room is sufficient. Otherwise, Luke, you're on your own. Arrived. We got Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I've got a Wi Fi router right here in my room, and everyone talks about how South Korea has the best internet ever, right? And so when I'm coming in the room, I ask the, the woman if the internet speed is good, and she says, no, it's not that good here. So I ran a speed test. If this is the bad internet, <laughs> oh my god. She said it wasn't good here. That it, <laughs> it's, 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 it can't go any further. 100 megabits up? Holy sh... If you know anything about the internet, 5 millisecond ping, fantastic. 57 megabits down and 86 up. That means I can upload a YouTube video in like a minute. And she told me it wasn't good. Let's go. Okay, I just arrived. Let's go do Korea stuff. So right now, I'm going to meet up with some Americans. First American and then Americans who have been living in Korea and just kind of talk to someone who lives here and get a general idea and then uh, share with you what they have to say about life here as a foreigner and what's going on with North Korea and Dennis Rodman and God knows what. All right, where? Where are we right now? What is this place? Uh, Anyang. Anyang. Anyang? Yeah, we're just Doesn't it mean hello? It, no, that's Anyang. Anyang? Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah, we're, it's just like a suburb, like, just, uh, I don't know. Suburb of Seoul. 20 minutes yeah, yeah. Seoul. Yeah. Okay, so, right now, we are in a suburb of Seoul, and we, I've got, uh, you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, my name's Cade. And I'm Jacqueline. And you guys are expats living in... 
South Korea. Yep. Okay, I just got here. I have no idea what's going on. You guys, how, you've been here for years. How, how long? Yeah, I've been here about four and a half years. Oh, right on. And then you, about the same. Same? Yeah. same? Okay, so let's just get to the nitty gritty. Is is the is the World War Three going to start? Is North Korea going to fire a nuclear missile? And just, is South Korea going to go to war? No, when I first moved here, like, <laughs> no. like four and a half years ago, like, people didn't even want me to move here. They're like, my mom and friend and family like oh it's in North Korea like you're gonna die in a nuclear holocaust and stuff like that when you move here all these people here none of them are worried about war all these Korean people are not worried about war and I think I don't really follow like the South Korean media much my Korean isn't quite good enough to understand everything but there's more stuff about North Korea on the in the American media than even in the South Korean media and I think <clears throat> some especially the left-leaning politicians they want to like try and have dialogue with North Korea so I think oh, like wow. um, I don't know if it's propaganda or it's just the way the media is spinning it in the US, but like Koreans aren't really losing sleep at night worrying about North Korea. So, at, you know, a lot of people that have lived here a while think it's crazy. I think what, first I'll say this the main reason why I want to talk to some Americans is that it's like the easiest intro into a country to meet people who I can just, like, we have a real conversation. You're American, I'm American, you've been here for a while. And then, you know, after this, we'll go meet some real Koreans. And, but I'm, I'm, I'm interested as, you know, you guys are expats. Was there, at any point when you came here, were you scared that something was going to happen? There, when I first moved here, April 2013, there was an incident. There was a lot of turmoil inside of North Korea itself. And there was a time when the American media was reporting that... North Korea, or that South, <laughs> Americans should evacuate South Korea, but it wasn't being reported here. And I get updates from the embassy. I get emails from them and, and messages if anything's happening. And we got nothing like that. But you know, it's our relatives were calling us, being like, "Hey, like, when are you leaving? Like, we're hearing all this is happening." And people did leave at that time. Um, and when I asked my co-teacher, "Is it safe?" I, she just laughed at me. My Korean she, she's a Korean? Yeah, she's Korean. <laughs> she's just like, no, not a problem. And after yeah. that, I never really got scared yeah. again. I like, vaguely remember the same thing happening to me. Like, people are messaging me, like, is everything okay? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, everything's okay. What's the problem? Oh, we're hearing all this stuff in the U.S. I'm like, it just seems like a normal day here. But what, what about, I mean, you know, Trump was going to send a fleet to the Gulf and, you know, so missile Korea, tests. Koreans did get worried about that to the Gulf? No, the when Trump was sending the uh, fleet here, mm -hmm. the the navy here. Koreans they got nervous not because of North Korea, but because they think America and Korea need to communicate well. And so when Trump lied about that or didn't know what was really happening, they they felt like the trust was breaking down between Korea and America. Well, so so yeah, I'll we'll, we'll, to clarify that, it was what was it? Trump said that he was going to send a, a destroyer or a, a fleet. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, but then I can't it, remember. It went the south detail. instead. Yeah, yeah, it went the but wrong never. direction. And the, so, well, yeah, it, <laughs> that's it weird. Was, you know, yeah. so I don't know if he just didn't know or or if he lied. It, I mean, it's hard to know with him. Well, you know, honestly, people who like Trump are going to say he changed his mind. People who don't like Trump right. are going to say he's a liar. The real, the, all, all that really matters is he said it was going to happen, it didn't happen. Yeah, and I, I was kind of, when that happened, I kind of tried to talk down my Korean friends who were, who were panicking a lot about it. You know, it's like... You, I completely yeah. missed that. Was that even rec was that recently? No, no, it's like... A couple months ago, uh, right? Was it, maybe okay. you were still in America, actually. Yeah, I took a break for a couple yeah. months. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, don't, I had a few friends in where I live who were so, really worried about it. Is it... Is it you know, in that instance, then, is it maybe they're more worried about the U.S. maybe starting something than actual North Korea? Well, it's like, it, well, you know, they, they have a stability that they have, yeah. like, a, in, it's a very delicate situation. Well, I think they're maybe worried, too, about, like, if um, Korea has a strong relationship with the U.S., that conflict with China also. But, um... Well, the thing is, the U.S. and South Korea have been doing, like, these big naval exercises regularly for a long time. So, like, you know... That was a different thing, though. It just yeah. was, like, a, a ship that was supposed to come here yeah. to protect Korea. But, yeah, the exercises that they have yearly they always, have always bring big up a big yearly trouble. yearly naval exercises. So, like, um, if that doesn't cause problems, like, I don't think, you know, sending yeah. another ship is going to do it. Okay. Yeah. As Americans, I'm sure you're big fans of Dennis Rodman, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
basketball diplomacy, right? I, I mean, have, uh, you I know, only know of him because of North Korea. <laughs> really? But, yeah. uh, well, I mean, I, I knew him before, but she didn't even know who Dennis Rodman was. Well, he's back. Has yeah. this been news here? Have people been talking about it? Well, the the guy who got um, taken. The, the, the prisoner, the American kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's been news, like in Arirang. Arirang is the uh, English news site in in Korea. So they've been posting about that situation, and um, yeah, they're talking about that. Well, you know? I I have people messaging me, telling me that Dennis Rodman. Someone they they were like Dennis Rodman got a hostage release. Did you hear about this? And I'm like, okay, that's well, like, I don't know if that's what happened. <laughs> you have to ask the Koreans yeah. about that. It's well, too new for me to know well, what they think well, about well, that. I mean, yeah. Dennis Rodman has been in North Korea, I believe, several times, and like him and like the leader, are, like Kim Jong Un, it's like his third trip there. Yeah, like apparently he's a. Uh, the leader of North Korea is a pretty big NBA basketball fan. Well, the so Bull, like, I, I'm, I think they're, they're Bulls fans, specifically the, the, the family, like his dad, and yeah. you know they were big fans. So do you, is it is it possible then that Dennis Rodman solves the Korean conflict? I, I would say would do something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if Dennis Rodman does it, you know, any, I guess anything's possible. You know, a great rebounder from the '90s who would dress up in <laughs> wedding dresses and dated Carmen Electric and solve the world's problems. I don't know. Hey, you never know. Like, you know, solutions come from all, all corners, right? Yeah. So, what, what, is there anything, or I should say, what's the one thing you think people sh need to know about what's going on with, with Korea and North Korea? I mean, maybe you already said it, but... Um, I think it's that, like, these conflicts and North Korea saber rattling, that's been happening forever, you know? South Korea and North Korea are technically still at war, but they've been at, you know, technically at war, this armistice, for over 50 years. And I think um, that North Korea is going to be a lot more rational than people think. I don't think, um, if they started a war, I think they realized it would be really bad for them, too. But it's also, like, right now, we just had a presidential election in Korea, and always there's more of this saber-rattling when there's a presidential election in Korea. So... I think there's a little bit right now when everyone's talking about this situation and it's getting really a lot of coverage in America, it's related to the presidential election here as well as what just our election in America, you know, so it feels like really uncertain maybe. Yeah, and I think too, if anything, it's actually better now or safer now or some Koreans think it's safer now because the new president is a little bit more liberal, a little bit more left, wants a more friendly relationship with North Korea versus the previous president so if anything it's probably better not worse interesting I mean you know in the US we're hearing story after story and I, I've been talking about coming here well I'll say I'll say this to you guys I've, I've been talking about coming here for a while because we keep hearing about the nuclear t you know the nuclear missiles test ICBM test Trump saying if they do another test then he's gonna you know send in the fleet and all that stuff and then you know so I, I emailed I, I've emailed back and forth with some other expats who lived here and they were just like their expat friends get worried, but the Korean people are just like. So, I you know I guess what I'm wondering is, is it possible then that the the Korean people are just so used to it they're not scared, but it, they're really you know like uh, I'll say this, maybe there really is an imminent threat, but they're just desensitized. Yeah, I've I've had that same question myself, but I don't think so. It's kind of like oh like you know if you're gay in Saudi Arabia like. Do you just get used to like worrying about like being executed for being gay or something? I don't think it's that situation here. I don't. I don't think they feel <clears throat> threatened. I. I don't think they've just been become accustomed to it or desensitized to it. I think they really don't feel like there's much of a threat. Well, they don't feel like there's much of a threat, right? That's the question. Is maybe but maybe there I is. I think too, like you know, North Korea and South Korea, they see themselves as like one country. You know, they see themselves as like separated family, and it is. There's a lot of people here who have relatives in North Korea and obviously vice versa. A lot of people here think, and I tend to agree with this thinking, is that actually we're at less of a threat here than say in other countries that they hate more. You know, where yeah. the, there's not that sort of um, kin connection. Oh, like maybe Japan or the United States would maybe be um, more at risk. Yeah, because it's always, they still feel like they're one blood, one people. And, I, and maybe I could throw this back to you. I mean, is Russia a threat to the U.S.? You know, do people think that <laughs> the Russia is going to nuke the U.S. because of what's happening in Syria? I mean, some people are really terrified. Cyber attacks. 
Yeah, some people are really yeah. terrified, so, but I don't know if I necessarily think Russia is going to destroy the U.S. So maybe, maybe you know, it's like, in the near future. I, don't, I don't know if either of you have siblings, but, or maybe the people watching. You know, when you get into a fight with one of your siblings and you just want to like, really, really want to punch him in the face, mm -hmm. but if anyone messed with your sibling, you'd punch them. Like, yeah. you know, you're still like, they're, as much as you're angry and there is a conflict, mm -hmm. it's still family, right? Yeah, well, I mean, I punch my siblings. And, but, yeah. <laughs> But if they attack, if they attacked me, I, if they att someone attacked my siblings, I would probably punch them. So if, even if you were mad at them, you know, yeah, like, yeah. it's like as much as you're fighting. So maybe that, yeah. So like, in this case, who are the siblings? Well, North the Koreas, South North and South Korea. Koreas. Oh yeah. yeah. Like they're family, right? So even though they're they're fighting and it's the external threats are still a bigger threat. Yeah, I mean, I I think if China attacked. I mean, well, we're thinking of all these weird scenarios, but I think if China attacked North Korea, I don't know if South Korea would no, do anything. No, no, but China, that's their only ally. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more complicated than that, we'll put it that way. But, uh, I don't know, any, any final thoughts on, I mean, I asked you what your the thing people should know is, but are there any final thoughts you might have about living here, anything interesting? Um... Well, I think one thing that's interesting is um, if you live in the U.S., especially live in a big city, it's such a monoculture here. Like, almost everybody is Korean, so if you walk around, you really stand out. But uh, if you're thinking about maybe living abroad in Asia, you know, I don't think you have anything to worry about, and you'd like your time here. It's pretty interesting. It's a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, if you want to check it out, I, don't, I wouldn't worry about you it. Know, like, I say this all the time, but the reality is the world is significantly more boring than most people think. Mm -hmm. It's like the media is trying to sell newspapers, right? Right. Right on. Well, thank you for, for hanging out and, and talking. Uh, I'm going to be here for, I don't know, less than a week. I'm going to be in LA for VidCon. But tomorrow, uh, I'll figure out what, what's going to happen, right? So I, I, now I'm going to talk to some actual local Koreans and, and see how they feel and try and learn as much about what's going on. There's, there's a lot more than just the North Korean conflict. There's, you know, and Dennis Rodman, there's the, the presidential elections and things like that that just happened, the protests. So stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions, anywhere I should go, anything I should look for, let me know. Click the like button because it really helps the video and I will see you all tomorrow. Oh, yeah.